Welcome to Chess Explained by Master Number 12. Today's beat, I'm gonna play a Blitz game on Lee Chess. I'm gonna walk you through my thoughts. Let's go. So, of course, first of all, we have to look for the game. Um, I just crossed 2400, so um, yeah, we're getting good quality games. And um, I, this is the second time I'm shooting this. The first time my opponent didn't make any move, so hopefully my, my opponent's... Okay, there we go. So we're playing with the black pieces. We're playing as an FM. And um, E4 was played. So we're gonna play... Pawn to e5, which is what I've I've been um, well, I, what I have been been playing. I've been playing c5, c6. I think I played d5 once. E5 I might have played before. So I'm gonna play knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, the Spanish opening. And in this position, I have many ways of playing. I have um, d6, I have knight f6, the Berlin, a6, I have bishop c5, I have knight g7. I think I'm gonna go for knight g7 actually. Um, maybe g6, bishop g7. This is this is a very comfortable way of playing as black. It's not so clear how uh, white gets. It's not so clear how how white gets an advantage uh, in any any opening. It's it's both both sides have to make their 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 work. I'm gonna play d6 now. This bishop can go out. My opponent castle, which is okay. I think c3 d4 is a little bit more straightforward. Um, and my plan is to either play bishop d7 or g6 bishop g7 or all of them. Um, and the reason why this is kind of annoying to meet as white is there's, compared to the other lines uh, where I put my knight on f6, sometimes bishop g5 is a problem, sometimes, um, sorry, sometimes e5 is def not defended so quickly. So when I play d6 so quickly, then yeah, this is defended pretty, pretty, pretty nicely. I'm going to play bishop g7 now. I'm not worried about d takes e5 because after d takes e5, I can, I can, uh, I can like after the queen trade I can take with the king and it's not such a big deal here it, this is a common pattern so when you when you do get a little bit pressured with the pin do not panic uh, in this case I can go a6 and after bishop a4 b5 and this is never good for usually never good for white I'm actually surprised that my opponent went for this um this, this should be no good I'm gonna castle I'm just keeping it simple chess is okay very complicated but Sometimes we don't have to overcomplicate things. You might think that because, um, I don't know, we're down a pawn, we have to do something quick. But in reality, we have the bishop here. Um, this pawn on c6 is pretty weak, and it's attacked. And the, the piece that is defending this pawn is the queen. And as white, you don't want your queen defending a weak pawn. Um, you, you want your queen to be active. Um, and a4 is not such, a, such, a, such an active square. Knight bd2 played by my opponent. I'm going to play pawn to f5. I have to be careful with this with this kind of moves because the diagonal does become a little bit weak for myself. But hopefully, or 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 given that I calculated a little bit before I made this move, I don't think knight g5, queen b3, knight g5 is a problem just yet. Knight b3, that's a very weird one. Now, now this queen is completely blocked off. I guess my opponent is saying, well, queen c4 will come eventually. But I still don't believe it. On top of that, I can take, take, and some like bishop f5, e4. I really don't like the way my opponent's playing this. I'm going to play h6. Maybe tuck my king on h7. If queen c4, king h7. I, I like my position. I'm down a pawn, sure. But I have the bishop here, and um, I have some pressure in the center. I'm also a little bit more active. It's not absolutely clear where this knight is going, for instance, or... As I said, this queen. Okay, knight a5, interesting. So let me let me just recap. So knight d2, knight b3, knight a5. So my opponent just spent the following one, two, three tempos getting the knight to a5. What did my opponent achieve? I don't think my opponent achieved much, to be honest. I can play bishop b6 now. I can play queen e8. I can also go for f4, g5. Hmm. I'm going to play king h7 first, asking the question, because if bishop e3, then f4 comes with a tempo. And that would be better. And the bishop d2, then, well, that looks a little bit ugly. Knight b7 is a little bit of a desperate move, because I'm not going to take. I'm just going to play queen e8, and then bishop takes b7 is a real threat. So, my opponent is already struggling, I think. If we check this with the engine, it, my assumption is that it's minus... The question is, is this minus 1? That would be a little bit too optimistic. I think this is probably minus 0.7. That's my guess. 
you you are home you you're very lucky you get to to confirm if i'm right or wrong 9d2 interesting i'm gonna go f4 g5 classic i think i'll go i'll go for this because if you look at white's pieces all white's pieces are in the in the queen side the only piece or the only pieces in the king side is of course the king and the rook and my pieces seem to be pointed out. In fact, the big, the big giveaway is that my, my center in general is pointing towards the king side. Uh, which is a little bit of a life hack in chess. So when your center is pointing towards a um, certain direction, it means you should play over there. David, I've, I've done that before and the engine doesn't like it. Or David, I've done that before and I lost. And my coach told me that it was wrong. Yeah, well, because the, all of these things are principles. They're, they're guidelines. You should always be pragmatic never dogmatic but yeah g5 knight g6 coming oh sorry knight g6 coming knight h4 we will see i think that my opponent is playing a little bit of like not not very not with a long-term plan for instance getting this knight to a5 might have been a plan but it was a bad one and on top of that my, my opponent's time management might not be the best which is kind of funny coming from me which Let's be honest, I don't manage my time well either. But I have the excuse that I'm, I'm commentating. Okay, enough of this. Should I go h5, g4, or should I go g4 directly? Looks like g4 directly must be fine. I am tempted of going knight g6, though. Because my knight is coming closer. And after b4, I can play g4 in a better, in a better version. Because knight, my knight is coming to h4. And for instance, if something like knight f3, I can take and play knight h4. Which is already annoying. In this position, I'm just going to play knight h4, though. Yeah, so now, now my opponent is kind of saying, look, I'm going to take with a pawn. And if you have to take with a pawn, that's, that's bad news. I'm going to play bishop h3 now. It would, be, it would be amazing if this bishop was in this diagonal somewhere. But uh, I'm going to have to be happy with bishop h4. Which is pretty good as well. So let's play bishop h4. Rook e2. Ooh, okay. My opponent already has to sacrifice the, 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 the exchange, but do you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to play rook g8. This whole, this whole, um, the whole, the whole center is blocked, so I can afford to, 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 to leave this king a little bit exposed. Um, because now, now I'm just checkmate as well, on top of that. Okay, we can gain a little bit of time. This is a little bit of a life hack. Queen g2, is that... Is that clever? It might be clever. But even easier is just to go for this, I think. I should not relax. Um, I think that relaxing in this kind of positions is the biggest mistake many people do. Um, everything, like, whatever you do, don't relax until the game is absolutely over. Because what happens is that you blunder a bishop like that, and then you're an absolute joke. Let's just say that I did that on purpose to demonstrate. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I blundered. I, it was very, very silly of me. But I now I get this check now. Now it's clear that I'm winning. I think even though I blundered, it was, yeah, it was. It was still winning. Okay, well, well fought from my opponent's perspective. I think it was pretty instructive until I blundered like a... Like an absolute genius. This is a fork now. Should not pre-move? Okay, yeah. I mean, I could have pre-moved it. Okay, good game, simple thinker. So what I take from this game is that um, we play this line, um, which is pretty solid. I think my opponent should have played c3, d4 right away rather than castling. That's, I think, the most ambitious way of playing. I think castling is absolutely fine, but just a little bit more advanced tip. Um, after d6, g6, d4, and bishop g7... Um, you should not be worried about these things, d5. In fact, I think this is already concession, a concession from white's side. I think white should have kept the attention, maybe bishop b3, maybe h3, knight bd2, um, kept developing normally, but after you go for this, it's it's not it's not good for white. I have the bishop here, I go f5, I get a very comfortable position, and after this weird maneuver, I think everything was downhill. I think there's, there, strategically, I think white is already lost, and once the king gets a little bit insecure, my bishop gets improved, it's game over. Um, I just needed to be a little bit more more careful, maybe queen g2 here, maybe bishop g2, bishop g2 is fine, uh, with the idea of taking, taking, and here just playing something like a normal human being, like queen h5.
But um, yeah, after this it was still pretty difficult for white and white blundered back. With such an insecure king, this is not a coincidence. And here the game ended because now it's really, really going down, down, down. Okay, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and have a nice day.